Danger Dolan. From heart rate sensors to a game that'll break your phone, we count 15 of the dumbest gaming innovations of all time. Number 15. The vitality sensor was revealed during E3 2009 as a method for measuring the player's heart rate while playing, presumably to have games react to how excited or scared you got as you played the game. Don't get me wrong, this could have been really cool in a horror game if it weren't for one glaring problem. It requires you to abandon the nunchuck in your left hand, forcing you to use the Wiimote in a very limited way. Possibly because of this very issue, the entire project was scrapped to the point to where it's never even shown off in combination with gameplay. Well, that and did we really need another pro peripheral for the Wii. Number 14. Limited Lives in Console Games you might argue that lives add to the difficulty of a game while also raising the stakes. And that is the case for some games. For example, in The Binding of Isaac, you have permanent death, but every time you die and restart the game, you get a different experience. However, in most cases, it was just a mechanic blindly copied from arcade games which required life systems in order to make a profit. What do lives actually add to Super Mario World? I mean, they give you dozens of them, and if you're not good enough to get by on the lives that you do have and you do get a game over, then you're going to be spending a lot of extra time backtracking. Which when it comes down to it is basically the point of having a live system in a console game. Besides, you already paid for the game and there's a dozen ways to make a game more difficult without forcing bad players to backtrack for a couple hours. Then again, we did have Game Genie back then and that was pretty much what it was for. 99 lives, infinite lives, infinite health, fuck your live system. Number 13. Escort Missions Who was a bright guy who thought gaming needed more babysitting? I can't even imagine any positive spins for escort missions. I don't know, it may teach a player some nurturing instincts, but it's probably just gonna make them hate a useless character. I looked hard for a well-designed escort mission, and the best I could find were people showing examples to where they barely escorted anything. Luckily, most developers have finally come to their senses and tried their best to act like escort missions were never a thing to begin with. Number 12. GameCube's Handle at what point did Nintendo think, you know what will really set our system apart from our competitors? A plastic handle! What? A DVD drive? <laughs> That's just a fad. They won't mind switching discs. The real inconvenience is carrying around the system. That's the hard part. Aggressive sarcasm aside, I can kind of see the attraction. I mean, maybe if the Xbox had a handle, that would be convenient. That system's actually a little bit heavy, but the GameCube weighs like five pounds. Besides, what kind of parent buys their kid a brand new game console and says, yeah, just go ahead and run around outside with that thing. You know, it only cost a couple hundred bucks. Who cares? Though I'll give Nintendo credit. If you were using the GameCube handle and for whatever reason you accidentally dropped the system, it would probably still work it was pretty durable number 11 virtual boy you might wonder why the Virtual Boy isn't higher on this list. Let me explain. Virtual reality isn't inherently a bad idea. In fact, it's a pretty cool idea that has a lot of potential. But when you're stuck with a pitch black and laser red color palette that causes chronic eye strain, it takes a lot of the fun out of 3D. To top it all off, they included two D-pads for some reason, and there's no comfortable way to wear glasses and have the headset on at the same time. Kinda hard to enjoy 3D on a system that wants to kill your eyeballs. Number 10. Tiger Electronics Wrist Games. It's easy to forget just how quickly technology becomes completely obsolete, but when you look at the Tiger wristband, you might think twice before buying an Apple Watch. Basically, all you need to do is imagine a Game & Watch, dumb down the gameplay, severely restrict the method of control, and combine these factors with a watch and you have the Tiger wristband. It's clearly marketed towards kids because they have no taste and their parents will buy them anything to shut them up, but even still, I can't imagine any kid wearing one of these and not being beaten up by the schoolyard bully. Number 9. Kiss Controller are your makeout sessions becoming dull? Do you and your partner really, really, really like bowling? Well, this is the invention for you. With the KISS controller, you can get judged for how well you and your loved one mac in the form of a bowling game. Not only that, you get all the pleasure of kissing a piece of plastic in addition to your partner, so it feels like you're having a sneaky threesome with the Bakelite love bot. Number 8. Friend Codes I agree that kids should have a lot of security when they go online. I mean, just look what's going on with the Minecraft community right now, but who thought it'd be a good idea to force a kitty system onto adults who happen to buy a Nintendo console? With titles like Bayonetta 2 and Wii Fit, it's pretty obvious that Nintendo are aware that more than just children are going to buy their products. At the very least, they could have made the code nine digits. I mean, pedophiles are pretty dedicated people, but they're not going to be able to figure that out. Hell, there's twice as many number combinations as there are people on the planet. So is Nintendo thinking that the world population is going to double in the next console generation and literally everybody's going to have a Nintendo product? Hard to tell if that's a needlessly complex security measure or a really scary foreshadowing of our Nintendo overlords taking over. But hey, if the population doubles, that means everybody's getting laid. Number 7. Sound-only porn game. 
There are a lot of weird and abstract fetishes on the internet, but I've yet to come across the I get off to the soundtracks of porn fetish. But then maybe this developer was aiming for the blind demographic. In reality, I expect that they wanted to get an approval from Nintendo by making it as PG as possible. At least that makes sense considering they removed all the graphics except for the occasional interface prompt. The end result is less sexy than the fable sex scenes and about as sexy as just listening to the sounds of your neighbors having way too much fun. And I should know, my neighbors are like 80 years old. They get really loud when they fuck. Number six. Play by screaming. For reasons I can't really comprehend, people actually seem to like the idea of screaming nonsense at a screen in order to complete objectives in a video game. Maybe I'm the odd man out, maybe it's a base human instinct to want to scream your way through a video game, or maybe it's actually a niche idea that has a vocal minority behind it. Either way, I don't see how screaming as a method of control is anything other than a novelty that should have been laughed off when the developer sobered up. Number five. Nintendo 64 Glove Controller. Use your hand motion to control a 3D game. I mean, it might seem like a good idea when you consider your hand moves in a 3D environment, but the practical application is many times worse than just using an analog stick. Especially when you consider there were no games specifically made for this controller. When I use this controller, the first thing I notice is that it's really hard to hold your hand in a position where your character will stop moving. But hey, if you want a challenge, this shitty controller will make anything you play way harder. Plus, you have a hand free, so it's perfect for that porn game I mentioned earlier. Number four. Piss controller. No, that's not me using a rude word to describe how bad it controls. This is literally a controller that you control by peeing onto a sensor. Probably the best part about this bizarre mess is that since it requires you to pee into a urinal, they made a belt that acts as a replacement for those without dicks. Probably a good thing that they added the belt since demonstrating this in public without it is technically a felony. Number three. Typing in adventure games. Instead of having a predetermined list of actions you can take or at least contextual buttons, some adventure games opted to have the player type in controls to perform any action. While this seems like it could be really intuitive and employ interesting mechanics, the reality ended up being anything but that. What it did do was force a player to go through every possible synonym to find the verb the game was looking for in order to get your character to pick up a goddamn apple! Pick up? Nope. Grab? Nope. Get? Nope. Take? Nope. Take apple? Yep. Okay, thank you! Number two. Send me to heaven. I have no idea if this was created with any sense of self-awareness, but even then it still can't be described as anything other than needlessly tempting fate. In order to play this game, you throw your phone as high into the air as you possibly can, and the higher it goes, the higher you score. Surprisingly, Apple decided to remove this app from the App Store. I would have thought they'd been all four customers breaking their phones. Then again, it wouldn't exactly be good PR if somebody tossed their phone up about 30 feet in the air, missed their catch, and just busted out all their teeth. I got a app to fix my teeth. Number one. Don't touch your controller. As far as I can tell, Takeshi's Castle was the first game to employ this dumb innovation to where in order to complete the objective, you need to stop using your controller for an extended period of time. In Takeshi's Challenge, it ended up being an hour doing fucking nothing. However, this idea didn't die with this niche NES game. Several other games have used this absurd idea for fucking achievements. Tell me, developers, how is it an achievement to do literally nothing? I guess pissing off your audience is an achievement in the asshole Olympics, but I don't think anybody buys a game in hopes of it including segments that reward you for not playing the game. I can do that shit at home for free! Where's my achievement for sleeping till noon? I demand a platinum trophy for skipping work! That's it for this countdown. And have a go- <gasps> Guess what? We're streaming right now on twitch.tv slash and You can come check us out as we play some video games. If you're not watching this video several hours after it went up, well, this is awkward. You can't watch it. So, uh, 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 have a go!